Hello, I'm Andrew McDonald from the Queensland Museum Network. Uh, today we're at Cobb Co Museum and I want to talk about a buckboard project that we have on. So the beginnings of this project was a wreck that was handed to us by the Main Roads Department. They found it on a station called Loch Erne up near Longreach. Um, it was found on the banks of Thompson River and we had it in storage for a long time and that's basically what we had. Um, treated as a 3D jigsaw puzzle. This is now the progress since November. So a couple of months work. I've replaced all the timber work with spotted gum, um, a local hardwood. We don't know quite what the original timber was. There wasn't much of it left, but that's an example. So it's a eucalypt, we know that. It was probably, the vehicle was probably made in Queensland and maybe out west at Longreach. Um, I've used some of these forms to replicate the bolster, for instance, that mounts on the longitudinal springs. All of the metal work was here. Everything except the wheels. Um, we sort of know the size of the wheels, but there's no tyres, there's no bands or bonds, um, but the axles and everything there. So what this enabled us to do was to work out what the vehicle is and we're quite sure that it was a buckboard, which was a lightweight, mainly a utility, I guess is the, co the closest thing. So it has three reaches, which are these longitudinal sections here. We have a couple of examples of uh, three reach vehicles in our collection. This is fairly robust. The steelwork that reinforces the reaches is a lot wider than what we have already. So that gives us an indication that it was a fairly strong little vehicle. Um, one of the defining features of a buckboard is a slatted floor. It makes it lightweight and it can drain water quickly. Um, we don't know what the slats were like. There's, no, there's none, none of them were left. So we've had to make some, um, basically some guesses from lengths of bolts etc. So as I say it was a 3D jigsaw puzzle. It had these seat supports and also had these side rails and the tailgate rail which was hinged. They together gave us the overall dimensions of the vehicle. The length was dictated by the, that side rail and the width by the tailgate which slots on like that. So this part was hinged. We've got one hinge. Uh, and we've had a blacksmith, a local blacksmith that teaches here. He's made another missing hinge for us. Basically, all of the metalwork that we need is here, except for a brake bar. There was a lever up here that was next to the driver, and he applied some blocks uh, through leverage onto the outside of the rear wheel. All that's missing, apart from two of these bars that went backwards from the first uh, crossbar. So we have to manufacture that. Interesting stuff to us is these parts look like they were made locally by a blacksmith. If you look closely, we can see forge weld marks. So they're made in two pieces. However, some of the parts weren't made by a blacksmith. We started noticing some of the metal work, these parts, were stamped with Netherton and Netherton Best. Netherton were steelworks in England and were operating until the early 1900s. We thought, well, the blacksmith is making it from Netherton steel that's been imported as a blank, as a flat bar. However, we noticed that this fifth wheel, now this is the, the steering component of, of a vehicle, of a horse-drawn vehicle. The smaller ones have this fifth wheel in two parts like this. It's stamped Netherton. Now, if it was just steel that, they, that the blacksmith turned into this, the Netherton would be curved. Actually, it's in a straight line. It's just there. That means that this unit was made in England specifically for this purpose. That means that the components were basically bought by a carriage works as a steering component for 
a vehicle of that size. Uh, an American company called Eberhardt were very famous for it. We imported a lot of kit form vehicles that the local carriage works put together. Another piece that fits like that is that this is the hitch. This part, it goes into a central pole and it had a pair of horses pulling this vehicle. It also is stamped with Netherton. So all that component comes together. Um, the springs were probably bought as well. They're very nicely made springs with tapered ends. It's a four spring, three reach undercarriage. Um, and we haven't got any um, plans for, for anything similar. The closest we have uh, some older drawings, but neither of them is for, it's a three reach undercarriage, but not for four springs. So it's a fairly unusual configuration. So I've redrawn it um, and combined a few drawings there to show really what we have. The seat is yet to be made and another, oh, sorry, <laughs> there is a missing part, the, um, the handrail here for the seat. That's fairly simple to manufacture. Now the wheels, we think that's around the right size, maybe a bit short. According to these sort of diagrams, 44 inches and a 50 inch wheel here. So bigger than this one and a little bit smaller than that one on the front. So basically, that's sort of getting towards what it looked like. Now, what would it have been used for? A buckboard was a runabout. Uh, in station country, it could have well been used to go out um, droving or mustering cattle. It would have been used to run into town. We have an advertisement for one of these made in Brisbane by a Brisbane Carriage Works. They called it the Queensland Buckboard and they boasted it could carry 10 cream cans. Now I worked that out at about 350 kilograms. So with the tins, the person, you're getting close to half a tonne load. So these things on stations might have carried a water tank and whatever else they needed to go out into the bush for a week. Um, but it was a runabout. And we don't have one in the collection, so we're really keen to get this finished. For more videos, go to our website at Museums at Home. Uh, and thanks for watching.